What's going on everybody, Trey for Pay back in the building, coming at you guys with part one of day nine of the Daryl Brooks trial. As always, I just wanna to come to you guys and say thank you so much for sticking with me and for continuing to watch these because it is a lot. <laughs> but thank you all so much for clearing up a lot of things in the comments for me about the restitution hearing. So I was confused about what percentage they could really take from them. And a lot of people let me know that they can take up to 25%. I want to say thank you so much to Rebecca Reams for telling me about the Son of Sam Law. Thank you for the $10 donation and also happy birthday. I saw that you said in the comments your birthday is today. So happy birthday to you. But there was a law passed called the Son of Sam Law that prevents people from profiting off the crimes that they've committed so i'm really happy to know that something like that exists i wasn't sure if daryl somehow had a way that he can make money off of what he's done so thank you all so much for letting me know about that and thank you to rebecca reams once again and while we're talking about donations i do want to thank a couple other people as well so thank you so much to anthony andrea for a five dollar donation i think i may have missed yours last time i should have told you thank you in the last video but i've I managed to catch it, so thank you so much for that. Thank you so much to Sandra F for a $4 donation. And I saw you said this is your first time donating to a channel. It's an honor to be the first channel that you have donated to, and I, I really do appreciate that. And last but not least, thank you so much to Laura Kaiser for a $15 donation. Guys, I really do appreciate this, and once again, I'm going to say no one has to send me a single thing. What I will say is if you would like to donate to the community of Waukesha, there are links pinned at the top of the comment section. So if you're looking for resources to donate to the actual victims in the community, it's right there for you. Okay, hopefully this is a shorter intro. I don't like holding you guys up, but I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. Thank you, BC. Okay, thank you. Okay. I need my staff and then... Oh boy. So per usual, uh, we have to get through the subject matter jurisdiction argument. And then I'm just, uh, I'm ready to see like what that cross exam <laughs> is going to be like. I just have an idea. It's going to be kind of, uh, it's going to be pretty intense. Let me see. They turn the audio off here for a second. Oh, State place. of Wisconsin versus okay. uh, Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please? Good morning, Judge Sue Upper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wichow appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I've set for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any other facts in the charging instruments. I don't know if you reflect actually that has the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person, in custody, in street clothing, wearing a suit and tie and a mask. You know, as, as weird as it sounds, I actually never realized he was reading something for that. I mean, not that that really means anything, but like I just never even noticed because I, whenever he does that, I just kind of blank out and let it happen. Like, I don't even really think about what it is he's doing or saying, but. For the record, Today. I do not consent to being called that name, Your Honor. All right. And we and still have yet to address subject matter jurisdiction. Um, the court has the addressed record. it for the record. So. We for the will record, be, has it been proven? Um, Mr. Brooks, I stand by the written decision that I issued in this case last week. A second what copy was provided. Are you Please don't to? interrupt me. Uh, a second copy was provided to you. I know you saw it because you tore I, it up yesterday. Um, so I'm not going to address it any further. Are you you are mistaken and wrong about the law that it needs to be verified or proven. Um, are you talking about the paper I accepted in return for? Okay, I can tell already that Judge Jennifer is really, really agitated right now. Like, I can tell because the little, like, you saw um, when he, like, right after he said, for the record, she said it. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm getting, like, too excited to talk right now. But right after he said, for the record, or something along those lines, she said, well, it is noted, for the record. Like, you can tell she's just not having it today. 
Um, I'm not sure if he's going to get kicked out. I literally say this at the beginning of every video. And he never gets kicked out, but I just want to put that that energy out there. I hope he gets kicked out today. Value. So with Except that, value I believe, value. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to continue with this trial, whether you believe jurisdiction has been proven or not. It has not. not been proven for the record. And it has. So it has that not. Detective uh, Carpenter was on the stand. And it needs to be proven. That was incredible. And I... <laughs> Heard of prosecution. Would like to have him brought back up unless there's any other issues the parties wish the court to address from the state. I did want to address something briefly. Go ahead. Um, as the court knows from our short discussions yesterday, the state will be playing a couple videos of the defendants in his statements. Um, the court had previously heard those as part of a motion hearing, and I'm not sure if I'm really getting the defendant notice or what I'm doing, but I, I really tried hard. And I, I'm pulling out snippets from this because if the court recalls, there are a lot of references that the defendant makes to prior domestics with Erica, um, his prior record, things that the court had previously excluded. So I'm going through and I am um, pulling specific time um, ranges from this so that nothing that was previously ruled um, inadmissible comes in. And I guess, obviously, this defendant has the absolute right to cross-examine the witness. He has the right, and we've offered, and we have been um, putting exhibits up for him. But I do want it to be noted that I would not be willing to have Mr. Brooks just say, oh, go to about the seven-minute mark, um, because... If he even goes like two seconds before a clip that I had played or two seconds after, it could include information that was previously ruled inadmissible. And right. I guess what I would say to the defendant is the court has previously protected the defendant um, to make sure that things didn't come out. Where he asked a question that could be construed as opening the door and the court said, we're not going to go there, Mr. Brooks, and he got the message. However, with this, if there's any portion of this video that's played that talks about the prior with Erica, I do consider that that he has opened the door and I will be asking the witness about it. So I see what she's saying. And you know what's crazy about this? She's giving him a heads up, but he'll probably just take it as her trying to tell him what to do and like, okay, she's a woman. She's trying to tell me what I can and can't do. So He'll probably still want to um he'll probably still want to question the witness about that exhibit and like jump to specific parts that pretty much open the door to what the judge already ruled on that, that that they shouldn't talk about. But also he probably wants her to do that because you know he loves the idea of slowing down the trial. So he'll probably think that if they do that, if they go against something that she ruled on, it'll give them like a maybe some way that they can like delay the trial because oh they went against her ruling now we can't um i don't know so he, he'll probably think it works that way in his mind so her saying this right now instead of him taking it as like a kind gesture and her giving him like a a warning he'll just he'll take it as like oh this is an opportunity well, i guess this is maybe more so directed at slow Mr. Brooks. things down that if he plays clips that um, contain that information, he will have opened the door. He's had this video for weeks at least. Um, this, these videos have been subject to a motion hearing. I'm not sure exactly what access he had to them before. I've reviewed the five hour video a number of times. I've been very meticulous in my timestamps that I'm grabbing out from here. And I am unwilling to have the defendant put Miss Gussie in a spot where he's kind of, well, around this point. He needs to give exact times that he wants um, started and stopped. Because what happens is if he says, okay, can you pause here? By the time he says that, five seconds may have gone by, which may be enough to, some of these, if I would play two more seconds than what I have here, it would open the door. So I just want the defendant to realize that this is kind of a slippery slope here, and um, he's not listening. He proceeds to at his own risk. 
And I'm not going to ask Miss Gussie to stop it at a certain time because I think something's about to be said. Um, Please don't that's hold on the defendants. Say, that's good. Um, and if he opens the door, I can um, assure you, I will I will go into it. Um, so I did want to put that on the record, Judge, not to be a jerk about it, but just once it's out there, I can't not address it. And if it's the defendant who brings it out there um, into the view of the jury, then I'm going to feel compelled to address it. Um, okay, this brings a whole new aspect to this. Now, I haven't seen this part yet, so I'm not sure. It's like now I'm wondering if he's going to do this. And if they actually do go into some of those things during, like, after this point. Because we know, like, at this point, we pretty much see all of Daryl's antics and, like, what he lowers himself to in terms of, like, the way that he conducts himself here. Like, he'll, I'm telling you, instead of him taking it as a warning, he'll just take it as, okay, this is an opportunity right now. So now I'm curious to see, like, once we get to the video, I need to, like, listen for that when the cross exam comes um if he's gonna like actually if he's gonna actually tell them to put up the exhibit and everything like i'm okay um, i'm, I'm not gonna I didn't pause know if the court wanted to go through the preliminary like instruction a, that you had bit. provided previously on the interpreter now I just my understanding see. is that mr marquez speaks very little english um if you want to add the um added paragraph that would be fine for the state we've had very i've had two discussions with him and uh i would not say he is um that english is a comfortable language for him all right thank you as to the first part to what the state brings up regarding the redacted recording i would remind mr brooks the court did enter some rulings previously why do you have to roll your eyes at me? Let's start the morning off on a good note, I sir. I told you. See, ju oh my goodness. Judge Dara is not having it today because he's he's a child. I don't remember how old he I think he's 39 or 40, but it's just so strange. I say this all the time. It's a it's a grown man, and he's acting like this. Uh, did you? So I don't think it's fair that you should say I rolled my eyes at you. I saw you roll you. your eyes at me, and I'm I not didn't roll my eyes at you, so don't. Don't do that. Well, Mr. Brooks, I'd appreciate Pure a little client. bit more respect. These I would rulings, too, Your Honor. Let me finish. Pure because now you're interrupting me. These rulings were entered by the court um, to prevent other acts evidence from coming in. But a defendant can open the door in a variety of ways. These recordings, and I have reviewed them previously, uh, do contain uh, discussion and statements by you regarding these other acts. And as you heard from Attorney Basie, she has all of the timestamps to stop at appropriate times so that the state does not run afoul of those pretrial rulings. You can open the door by asking questions, by asking for a video to be played, um, and not knowing those exact timestamps. I think it's important that I reinforce what the state has just advised you of uh, so that when you are watching the recording, as all of us will be, um, if there is something you want replayed and you want to cross-examine the witness about that you know those time stamps and then the state has graciously indicated they would assist once again in replaying portions of that video. I don't need a response from you unless you feel you would like to give a response yeah, to any of that. Um, with all due respect, they're the ones that want to play the video. Okay. So I don't I don't understand how I'm the one opening the door. They chose to play the video, so they're not gonna play the entire video. What? Right? They're going to redact out, probably stop, fast forward the portions that this court said would would be inadmissible so if you so for example if during your cross-examination of detective carpenter 
you ask the state to replay a portion of the video and you say go back to around the seven minute mark, you have to understand that you may open the door, even inadvertently, to some of those other acts, evidence coming in. So what I'm telling you is if you want any portions replayed, then, or if you ask for the entire video to be played under the rule of completeness, that you have an understanding that you would be opening the door to the evidence of other acts coming in. Potentially, I'll have to rule on it at that time. Um, but, so be mindful of the timestamps. I, I don't understand it, Your Honor. That, that'll be, that's almost like you making a ruling and then it, it not having any standing. If you well, already made a the ruling. ruling's against them. I told the state they can't offer this evidence. Right, They're that's what the I'm one. saying. So if you offer the evidence or ask questions that would open the door, that's a different story. And we all have treaded lightly when you've asked questions that would have opened the door to a variety of witnesses. So the state's just simply saying, look, <coughs> we're going to do our job. We're not going to put in the other act's evidence. We're going to pause the video, fast forward the appropriate spots. But if you want any portions replayed, or if you ask for the entire video to be played, uh, then you do that at your peril of having those other acts evidence come in. So that's all I want to tell you. Um, as far as the jury instruction, uh, do you have any position on whether that second, well, I shouldn't say second, it's the very last paragraph where it says, add the following if appropriate. Do you have any position on whether the court uh, reads this entire jury instruction 60 to the jury prior to Mr. Marquez being called as a witness? Yeah, I think the jury should hear whatever need, needs that they need to hear. Do you have a position on that last paragraph specifically, sir? Given the information no. that the state he has provided He doesn't even know today. what it is. He has no idea what's going on. Paragraph. It's in brackets, and it's after a bolded section that says, add the following if appropriately. Advise the parties yesterday we would be talking about that this morning. He's actually just now reading this. His whole life, his freedom and everything hangs in the balance. And he's just now reading this. I mean, it was just stated that um, the witness doesn't speak very good English. And so that would, that would indicate that it would be a lot more work for the interpreter. To make That's sure not that what I'm asking you about, sir. I'm asking whether you whether you have a position on whether I include the very last paragraph of that instruction uh, to the jury. He'll probably. I don't know what he's going to say. I'm not even going to try to guess at this point. No, so I really don't feel take like that needs to be read to the jury. Sorry, I talked over it just a little bit. Hold on. <clears throat> no, I don't feel like that needs to be read to the jury. Um, I think it's pretty, it's pretty clear from the, from all the language leading up to that. Let me ask Attorney Basie a question about. Uh, <laughs> the contact the Office of the District Attorney has had with Mr. Marquez. Were you able to communicate at all in any way in English, even if you would describe it as broken English? Yes, I think our last conversation, we probably said, um, I said something in English, he responded, and then when I said something else, I think he needed translation for that. His primary, our victim witness person, <clears throat> um, specialist assigned to the case, is bilingual and she speaks to him in Spanish. All right, given that a bit of information provided by the DA as an officer of the court regarding his ability to answer some, but not most, I think it's uh, appropriate to read the very last paragraph 
um, certainly doesn't hurt. It's not going to take away. So I will read the entirety of jury instruction 60. Obviously, the part that uh, says read here if appropriate comes out. Uh, and then um, I will print that off. And uh, that is what I will read at the appropriate time. Did that print, Madam Clerk? Daryl's probably so. Listen to that. Oh. Daryl's probably upset that his... How do we know exactly what words uh, the witness will be able to understand in English versus... That's not how the interpretation works. The questions are in English. They're interpreted in Spanish to the witness. The witness will answer, presumably in Spanish, uh, and then the witness's words will be interpreted in English, and it's the English, as this instruction says, that is the evidence. How would we know something like that in advance? A little unfair that uh, prosecution has had conversations with the witness, and I haven't, considering that it's my witness. They were on the state's witness list as well. I Whose believe. fault so, is that? Um, it's fair for either party to reach out, and if witnesses want to talk to either party, Whose fault uh, in is preparation, that? that's frankly fair game. So how how would I be able to reach out to a witness, uh, Mr. Brooks? You are representing yourself that uh, obviously poses some challenges and difficulties, but that is the state and stage that we are at. So with that, um, I know uh, we'll get Detective Carpenter on the stand. He can come up and be out here uh, when the jury comes out. Um, so come on up, sir. I will swear you in again, as is my practice when there's a witness on the stand for a second more, day. I have one more thing real quick. We don't care. Let's um, move on. Well, it needs to be other than subject matter jurisdiction, it's, so what is it? You didn't even let me get to it. I said, what is it? I said, it needs to be something other than subject matter well, jurisdiction. Can I what get is to it? it? You can say. There's no way to know what I'm going to say if I can't say it. Mr. Brooks, please tell me what it is you'd like to address. I, I want to address why my um, ICFs have not been addressed, because I know you have them. Why have I not getting copies? I've gotten copies of every other ICF. Why not the, the recent ones? Sir, I am not uh, going to be the intermediary to anymore the for ICFs complaint. that are directed to the uh, clerk of court regarding copies. That's not that's not explaining why um, I haven't. I'm even not the been keeper told of the record. If, if so if there's something received. you want me to address, then you should address your ICF to me and not the clerk of court. Well, where is the where is the ICF? Sir, if I sent it, I should I be able not, to get a copy. I've gotten copies of every single one. You need whether to they ask were addressed, for that from the clerk. Whether of they court. were addressed to you or whether they were addressed to the clerk of courts, I've always I'm not been told. That further, Mr. Bur She's already talked to him about this, so this is like a another delay tactic, you know, which isn't surprising. That's literally all he can do. I knew as soon as she said. Um, it can't be subject matter jurisdiction. He was going to quickly pivot to like something else like, uh, oh, ICFs. Like, okay. Brooks, I'm not going to be the intermediary when so you have the, questions to the clerk of court. So what's the point of me sending them. the ICF, me doing what you asked me to do and sending them and then not being able to know if they've even been received and get a copy of them, which I've been getting copies of them not ever ask since. For a copy of the ICF, they don't sounds have like a personal problem. I addressed, I addressed it when I first sent it. I asked you on the record, did you receive it, Mr. Brooks? You said, I didn't receive anything because nothing has been sent to me. Well, so where's the if ICF? there's something that you need, then you should reach back out to the clerk of court. I shouldn't have to do but that. We're not going to take it. up court time regarding an ICF sent to the clerk of court. Again, I will advise you once again. I did this the other day. If there's something case related it needs to be addressed to me if it has to do with the record it needs to go to the clerk of court and it was because it i was am sent not to the clerk of court the but i still uh, should be i still should be able to be told if it was received and get a copy which you've done that before every single icf and i told you so i would no it longer be doing that sir because of this very issue it so you said so now time. it changes so now it changes all of a sudden? No, it didn't change all of a sudden, sir, and you know that. So don't no, try to no. confuse Does the Does it record. change all of a suddenly? Because no, I've been getting copies of everything I've sent, which is all what you suddenly. asked me this to do. This changed last week, and you it know should, that. It shouldn't change. So no, I don't that, know it. I'm bringing the jury out, and I'm not addressing this issue. So I want I want We're the copy of my forward. ICS that I send. Um, send the request. Can we just kick I don't have to send her another request. Where's the one that I just sent last week? Right, the jury is going to come out, so please be respectful. I, I will, but at the same time, you still have to, I did what you asked me to do. If you tell me to do something and I do it, and then now you're saying I, 
I'm not going to get a copy which you've been providing them ever since I ever since you told me to do it. Mr. Brooks, the rules on that changed last week. No, no, it did not. I'm still supposed to be able to say if it's been received or not. So why should I have to send multiple ICFs to even know if they, they've been received? That's ridiculous, Your Honor. I'm going to give the parties the uh, final version of jury instruction 60, which I will be reading at the That's, appropriate time. Come on, you can't change stuff at the last minute. You no, asked Mr. me to Brooks, do something. I did it as a courtesy, you and frankly, no, you're not courteous I'm not, to me. I'm not, so even, the I'm, not even out, I'm not even referring to that. reflect that the jury I'm referring is to coming the fact, I'm referring out. to the fact that you All haven't right. even Mr. had Brooks, enough respect to tell me it's been received. to the jury. They're coming out. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't uh, mean that you shouldn't be able to tell me if my ICF has been received. ICFs that you told me to submit. Nobody cares about your ICFs. Like I, I think he, it's really weird. You know, I've said this once again. He's the things that he does. Like they're so repetitive that like a, a lot of times I have the same like viewpoints on it. But it's like. The way he gets things done, he literally just tries to tell people or like tries to trick people into doing it, which he's bad at. He's terrible at it. But he tries to like basically ask everyone to do it for him. And then he kind of just piggybacks off of whatever they do. Like, look at how, the um, you know, the prosecution is doing literally everything for him. And he's just telling them they put up exhibit uh, 72 or something like that. It's like. Dude, she told him exactly who to speak to. So it's literally just a delay tactic. And once again, he comes in in the morning and uh, he tries desperately. Like this is a desperation move right here. Nothing he's doing is working. And it just comes from a place of, oh my God, everything's slipping through my fingers here. Let me just try to like get something at least going. Like, let me try to... I don't know if he wants Judge Judge Darrow to like throw something at him. <laughs> like he's hoping to get some kind of major reaction to where everything will stop and everyone's like having to deal with a different issue instead of like focusing on him. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. But you told me very that. annoying. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will disregard the commentary by Mr. I accept for value in return for value this document. Just like you've been hiding everything from the jury that they the need to do. The jury will disregard. Please click the this. court is not hiding anything from kick the jury. Yeah, yeah, you are. So, please Mr. Work. Brooks, please be respectful of the jury. They're and coming you should, out. You should be respectful we of what are, you asked me to do. You are addressing issues that are not related to evidence they in are. this case. You asked me to do Mr. something, Brooks, I'll do it. please. And right. then now it changes. Everyone can be seated. Thank you. This is ridiculous. Just like subject matter jurisdiction hasn't been proved. Just like you're making judicial determinations that you don't have to prove anything by law. Which is a tacit agreement by you, Your Honor. Ladies and oh, gentlemen. Tacit the agreement thrown in there. This is a 40 year old man, everyone. The statements currently Why? Being it's made true? by Mr. Brooks. Why? Because it's true. Incorrect statements of the law. They, they are prove not that they're incorrect. Proof. In this case. Where's the proof? Where's the legal proof? And you need to disregard them. Because you don't have it. And we are going to continue proof. with testimony, Mr. Brooks. I warn you, I don't, do I don't, not interrupt. I don't we identify will by that name. have a discussion about whether you will continue to be here. I don't All consent right. to being called that name for the record. Detective Carpenter, please stand, as is my practice when a witness is on the stand for a second day to be sworn in again. Go ahead, Teresa. Please raise your right lie hand. lie to the jury. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give should be oh, the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> and just for the record, please state he, your name for day two. Detective J. Carpenter, J-A-Y-C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. -E -E All right, thank you. Go ahead, you may continue. Okay, before we begin, I know I paused right now. <laughs> so I was just going to say really quick, I could tell this is going to be a day of just pure tantrums because Daryl's already worked up. This guy's not going to, he's not going to toy around with him. So this is going to be a moment where it's like, okay, Daryl's going to be infuriated because he can't like outsmart it. And this guy's going to give him nothing. And, uh, I don't know. He'll probably get kicked out, but let's, let's go ahead and see how this goes. Sir, yesterday when we ended for the day, um, we were at the point where we were talking about 
you interviewed mm -hmm. the defendant, Daryl Brooks, um, on November 21st, 2021, at approximately 11 o'clock p.m. Do you recall that? Objection. I don't believe that's being called that name for the record. Objection is overruled. Yes, I do Rounds recall that. Overruled. Not relevant. Yeah, it is relevant. Your Honor, at this point, or I think last night, we asked for um, State's Exhibit 81 to be admitted into evidence, which is the defendant's clown, statement man. provided to Detective Carpenter and Detective Stern on November 21st of last year. And Exhibit 81 has received permission to publish is granted. Objection. My um, notes reflect <coughs> that it's 25 minutes. That is correct. Um, let me get the exact time of it. Objection. I didn't provide any statement on the 21st. Did he just say I didn't provide any statement on the 21st? So he's. What? Is he trying to basically sort of kind of testify right now to say, oh, that wasn't me? Like, so I guess that's the closest he's gotten to making like a. Um, a concrete statement saying like, oh, this isn't me. That's not me. I'm just here to represent the guy. I'm just here as a representative on his behalf. That makes no sense at all. That is the weirdest thing ever. By Mr. Brooks, he is not testifying. Therefore, his statements are not evidence. And my objection should be noted for the record. Weirdest thing on earth. Your Honor, the um, entire video is 25 minutes and 27 seconds. The state is, will be playing from 4 minutes and 25 seconds to 14 minutes and 25 seconds. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, boy. First look at the interrogation footage. Clarify. We had talked about it last night a little bit. Um, what we are hearing today is the audio interview only, correct? Objection leading. Oh, overruled is foundational. She may ask it that way. Go ahead. You may answer, sir. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hope you're all doing good. I haven't said that quite yet. I hope everyone's doing good wherever you are. It looks like we're gonna hear just the audio really quick. I'm trying to make sure, just in case the audio is low, I got my headphones in. Good. Staring down, yes, sir. Daryl. I'm uh, Jerry Borchowski, the FBI. FBI, yeah. FBI. Yeah. I'm Mary. Yep. They're just kind of helping out because we're so short staffed tonight. So, thank you. Yeah. That's all it is. How's your how's your your shoulder? Right. Your, is that yeah. Well, he said in four to six weeks I might have to get it because it's still something's wrong. I know. I know. You bang it up before or something? Nah, just it was just the way they slammed me. Um, okay. Hit the ground, kind of like went up. Boom, boom. That's where the knee well, came from. Knee but, as well. okay. yeah. yeah, but the shot is insane. I, I know. I know. Something. I like how he glances at him during this too. Said four to six weeks, the MRI won't be able to tell if anything's torn or anything like that. So. Okay. Okay. FBI though. We, we help out our local partners all the time. This yes. is just something that we're here to do. Because I'm like, what? Yeah, believe it or not, we, we work at NPD a lot. We, we come down here, so we're kind of all over the place. Um, but yeah, like uh, Detective yeah, Carpenter but, like, said, we're- Y'all you know, for real, the FBI yeah, for real. That's yeah. what this says, at least, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm not trying to be funny, but this is the first time I've ever even seen an FBI agent 
in real life. Mm -hmm. Most we get that reaction from most. Guys <laughs> no, because he's like, am I in a movie right now? Y'all show me on that. This is some sick stuff. Like, he literally just ran through a parade. I don't even know how long ago. I, I think it's just, like, maybe a, a couple hours ago um, before he did this. And he's chuckling about the fact that he's seeing an FBI agent for the first time in his life. And look at the circumstance of why he's seeing one. But he's happy to be seeing them. It's... Oh, don't don't prank me or something. Yeah. Don't wanna, uh, you don't need to let that yeah. freak you out or anything. Right. And again, we yeah. do work. So, so we work on a task force with MPD quite a bit. So I'm we a, are. I'm gonna put my arm like this just to stretch it out. Just to. Yeah. I don't yeah. want you to think I'm doing them crazy. You good? Just, you good? It leaves some pressure. Yeah. Good. It right up in. I'm. I'd say. No, you're good. Yeah. Like she was saying, don't let the. You know, don't let. Don't let them get all. Don't let them make you nervous. Okay. Um, you'll be talking to me mostly and my partner a bit. No, you know, they'll ask you a little too, but um, just trying to get to the bottom of everything. Look, you were found basically running around in the yard. You said you grabbed dude's phone. That's no, I didn't grab it. I, well, I, actually, I don't mean you stole it. You oh, asked for it and you made a call. And that's just kind of what I'm up here to start with and, and get the background about it. If you're willing to tell me just what you were doing in the yard, you know, because obviously we have the perception we got, like I told you. You know, they said, okay, they had us write this warrant, get some of your blood, but I have one side. So what am I missing? I'm missing Darrell's side, right? I don't know what created all this, why these people are calling us. Um, and I can't really clear that up, or I'd like to clear that up, but the best way to clear it up is if, you know, if you want to talk to me about it, okay? And that's just kind of what I'm here to sit down and, and, and chill with you about. We've been, been talking to you, what, about four hours now? And we've Probably been pretty, longer. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's been Probably pretty laid longer. back. So I'm looking to keep it that way. I'm not looking to, to pull any fast ones on you. That's why I've been straight with you to that point. I'm going to keep doing that now, right? Um, Darrell, is it D A R R E L L? Do I have the spelling right? Yes, sir. And it's E Edward, like full middle is Edward, yes, right? Yes, sir. Brooks, B R O O K S? Yes, sir. Okay. And just verify your date of birth for me. 221 82. So you're 39? Yes, sir. Okay. He confirmed his name and date of birth. Ooh. Okay. Married at all? No. no. As little as I am, I'm like, he had this land. Me? Yeah, how many kids you got? Three. Three? How old are they? 18, 14, and seven. 18, 14, and seven. Yeah, yes. what do they like to do? Uh, My baby girls, they are, they into everything that's going on right now. The TikTok. <laughs> yeah, always on the phone, right? they, they always dance and making videos. My, my oldest daughter just started high school. Yeah. And my baby girl is, she just started the first grade. So, yeah. so they get all like He couldn't even tell them just now what they like to do because he literally has no idea. So he just, I don't know if that was made up or. That is the really oldest. What my, that my girl's was. already young. So they can like build a computer, but can't normally talk like we know how to, right? Yeah. So you're born in Milwaukee? Uh, actually, Detroit. Detroit? Yes, okay, sir. Like, living in Milwaukee now? Yes, sir. Grew up here. Um, we left Detroit when I was maybe, I don't even think I was walking and talking yet. So okay. Milwaukee's home, Wisconsin's home, born and raised. Okay. Uh, not working right now, right? No, not at the moment. No. What do you do when you're working? What do you like consider your job? Um, the last job I just had, I was working at a, um, like a sheet metal place. Okay. You know, basically just, um, they would have like these uh, like hook things. Like you just, just basically, it's strenuous because you got to do a lot of lifting. Lot of lifting. And it's a lot of heavy lifting, but you basically just hanging these pieces on these hooks and they're going through the thing, they're steaming them, painting them. Then they okay. come back around and then you just box them up and load them. So you're not married? No. Live, you have a girlfriend? Yeah. You live with her? No. What's her name, your girlfriend's name? Her name is Erica Patterson. E-R, how did she spell it? E-R-I-K-A. P-A. Yeah, P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O. Okay, and it's 4014 North 19th Street in Milwaukee. Do I have the right address? Yes, sir. Is that an apartment or a house? It's a house. Okay, what's the zip code there? Uh, five three two zero nine. 
Okay. Um, and last grade you completed in school? 12th. Grade. 12th grade. Yeah. Graduated high school? Yes, sir. What school did you go to in Milwaukee? Riverside. Riverside? Yes, sir. Milwaukee Riverside. Tigers. <laughs> I see you smile. You know about Riverside, man? I heard things. Uh, you kicked y'all playing football. Stuff. Nah, it was West Dallas. Oh, no. I don't think we play Riverside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah. He is confirming literally everything about himself. But, like, that's not going to stop him from still saying he's just a third party. I appreciate all the cooperation and all but the everything has been confirmed, had, you know, to this point throughout. Um, you know, being that you're sitting here and you know, I had, had some handcuffs on you before and all that jazz, Absolutely. you familiar with your legal rights? Yes, have I you am. ever had those read to you before? Yes, I have. Okay, so as you can see, they're written on this paper. So, because you know, if I was sitting here and talking to you on your couch, we wouldn't have to worry about this, but because you're here and not in your home just kind of a it's kind of a thing i got to read to you okay and again it's just something i got to read to you before i kind of get your side or hopefully get your side here and love to hear your side i'd like to know what the rel has to say about okay you know we got some people calling us saying this you know um he said you made hundreds before no i wasn't driving someone thought you might have been he had to get that warrant he ended up calling a guy just to use his phone kind of loitering around and just you know how nah, you ended up how you ended up kind of being it. That's what they say. No, 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 no. I was gonna say I I I knocked on his door to use his yep, phone. Yep. Then, right, but it probably wasn't him that called because he got his phone, but someone was concerned about something. So just trying to figure out what's going on down in that neighborhood. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All I right, mean, Jerome. Kinda, you know, like I said, oh. I, I probably that wasn't probably the best, but I was just like I need to get an Uber. Yep. I have money on my Cash App card. Yep. So I'm not trying to rob anybody. Sure. I'm yeah. not trying to break it any. And obviously, you can tell I'm not drunk. I'm not, yep. you know, under the influence of anything. So okay. All right. Um, so <laughs> it's what it was. Okay. All right. Um, in regards to these, Darrell, then do you understand that you have the right to remain silent? Just what is he pretending to write down yes, right sir. now? Okay. And then I just write down your reply. Um, you understand if you give up that right, anything you say may be used against you in court? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand you have the right to consult with an attorney and have an attorney present during any questioning? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to you by the court? Yes, sir. Understanding the above rights, uh, Darrell, are you willing to speak with me, us, primarily me, I'm the one that's be doing most of the talking probably uh, I just want to know a little bit more about what's going on just a little bit because well, like I'm, I told I'm you I know very confused. little I just know that you know you're down in this neighborhood someone called you know they didn't know what you were doing down there and things like that so I got limited from their side but I'm looking to see you know what you have to say about it. I'm looking to see you know maybe maybe a lot of maybe the caller was just on some BS down there you know, I don't know. He's terrified. You know, I don't know. But I can't, I can't really show the court that if I don't have, you know, if I haven't talked to you. So that's why I'm here, just to kind of see what you got to say about it. Get your side of it. You know, running around a neighborhood's not, not the end of the world. It's not a huge deal. Right, right, you know? right, right. Unfortunately, I wouldn't have had to do that if, if I made better decisions with women. Yeah. But not going to point the finger. Sure. I'm a grown man. Yeah. I make my own decisions, so I'm not gonna point the finger at nobody. I just yeah. didn't think. Didn't think, yeah. yeah. That's literally yeah. all he does. You want to speak to me, Darrell? Uh, not right now. So, was a decision made to speak with Mr. Brooks? The following day. Being called the name, leading the witness. The objections are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, ma'am, it was. Now, when you spoke with the defendant on the 21st, what did you have some general information as to casualties from yes. the trade? Yes, I did. What information did you have at that point? At that point, not all the information was in yet, but I knew, um, as I stated in previous testimony, 
Uh, our emergency department was very full. Um, I knew there were significant injuries to many people. Um, I knew some were deceased. I did not know the exact number at that time. You had um, approximately another couple minutes of conversations with Mr. Brooks before you called it a night. Um, was he, what was the vibe that you got from him during those couple minutes? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name as a leading witness. The objection's overruled, you may answer. I would say f friendly. I think <coughs> when you heard the, the clip there, um, Mr. Brooks jokes about Riverside and football. The individual he was talking to at that time was Detective Stern, um, as you can't obviously see him in the video. Um, I could sense, and I believe you can hear it in Mr. Brooks's voice in that clip, um, the FBI put him on edge. It was unusual to see them. I could sense the nervousness he did transition as I talked to him more throughout that clip into a more normal conversational tone again. But when I was speaking with Mr. Brooks casually throughout the night, that was the type of tone um, he had with us. It was very friendly and he seemed, when it came to myself and Detective Stern, very comfortable speaking with us. Now you had stated your initial intent was to talk to him about loitering in the area that he was arrested. Do you recall that? Objection. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I do. Did Mr. Brooks at all talk to you about the loitering in terms of what the focus of your investigation was that night? Objection. I don't consent to being caught that name. Leading the witness. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, the statements he made in there, um, you know, about, you know, being in the area because he needed an Uber. Um, you know, he, he says more, you know, to us about not knowing the area of Waukesha. He, he doesn't know the streets, things of that nature, and he just needed an, an Uber to get home. Um, so yeah, that was, that was his reasoning for, for being down there, and he stuck to that reasoning the entire time. Direct your attention then to the next day. So, strike that. That night, was he transported to a Muskego Police Department? Yes, he was. And did you go to Muskego Police Department? Yes, I did. Um, did you transport him? So it was a dual transport. Uh, Officer Leha from the Waukesha Police Department responded to Waukesha Memorial Hospital in a, in a marked squad car that has a, an, uh, an appropriate rear backseat transport compartment. <clears throat> Mr. Brooks was placed in that car, and myself and Detective Stern followed in a separate car. So once you get to City of Mosquito Police Department, do you do anything there? Objection, Lee. Overrule. You may answer. Not the first night. Myself and Detective Stern stood by while some basic medical questions that were part of Mosquito Police Department's policy as far as holding a prisoner were asked of him. Um, I was there until Mr. Brooks was placed into his cell. Once Mr. Brooks was in his cell, I explained to him that I, me personally, would be returning the next day to speak with him more and give him more information about the investigation. Did Officer Leha end up staying at the Muskego Police Department with the defendant? Objection, strictly to you. Overruled. Yes, he did. Why was that? Objection, D. Overruled. That was Muskego's request, being Mr. Brooks was Although, so because of the transition and we did not have our own municipal lockup facility, um, we requested to use Muskego Police Departments and they allowed it. But being Mr. Brooks was technically in our custody, they requested that one of our officers stay um, there to do the monitoring and the jail checks. So do you return to the city of Muskego Police Department the next day, November 22nd, um, to speak with Mr. Brooks again? <laughs> Yes, I did. I don't to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I did. Did you return with anyone? Um, I returned with Detective Ben Stern. Now, what was the plan for this interview? You had said the previous day 
the intent was to kind of start very low, just looking at loitering. Um, did you have a plan going into the interview on the 22nd? Objection, leading. Overruled. I did. What was that plan? So the plan was different from the prior day. So the interview with Mr. Brooks on the 22nd didn't start till about a little afternoon that af that afternoon, 12, 11 p.m. to be exact. Around 8 a.m. that morning, there was a briefing with all officers that were involved where I learned some additional information. Um, one of the things I learned that morning was that there was a domestic abuse incident that had occurred between Daryl Brooks and Erica Patterson, something I was not aware of when I was with Mr. Brooks during the evening hours of November 21st. Um, there was also much more information at this point in regards to the parade incident. Um, as I had stated in my earlier testimony, it was very, very chaotic that first night um, between radio traffic and what I could hear going on down in the downtown, as I had stated, it was really unlike anything I've ever been involved in. But by Tuesday morning, the 22nd, we had narrowed it down to basically just Mr. Brooks, that there were not four people in this car, we were looking at one man. So he was now a suspect in the domestic abuse and driving in the parade. So I chose to begin the interview on the less serious matter, that being the the battery charge that he was looking at with Erica Patterson. Now you said Tuesday the 22nd. Um, <clears throat> Monday, excuse me. Okay, thank you. And um, what- So wait, just a quick question. Did that technically open the door now for him to talk about the, the case between him and Erica with the domestic abuse? I don't know if that technically opened the doors for it or if that technically like allows them to ask follow-up questions about that or because I'm not completely sure like what the ruling encompassed like in terms of that case but what do you try to know. do when you're meeting we'll with out. someone do you, do you try to establish any type of rapport with that person is that helpful do you how did you approach this interview on the 22nd objection leading um, I'll sustain it to the form of the question it's actually compound if you could rephrase how did you approach the question of Mr. Brooks on the 22nd? Objection, I don't consent to be in court that night. So when I began to speak with Daryl Brooks on the 22nd, um, I began with some very light conversation. I explained to Mr. Brooks that I had more information from the previous day. I explained to Mr. Brooks that his girlfriend at that time, Erica Patterson, had made some domestic abuse allegations against him that were physical in nature. I didn't indicate to him exactly what she said he did, but that there were physical allegations. Um, I explained to Mr. Brooks that there's always two sides to a story and that, you know, a lot of times in my experience as an officer, it, it can be about perspective. There's one, there's side A, there's side C, so to speak, and maybe B, somewhere in the middle, can, can be your truth. Um, and I basically just implored him to be honest. I, I touched on the fact we had talked extensively the night before about things such as him enjoying baseball, him having watched the Packer game, him having been disappointed by the result of the Packer game. And in situations such as interrogations, I think it's always important to let a person know that obviously I'm an officer, but I'm a human being, as are they, and you want to try to not let them see that barrier and feel comfortable talking to you. I think in any interpersonal relationship in society, there needs to be rapport. And I try to establish right. that before getting into the specific details of the crime at hand. <laughs> Look at how aggressively he is staring him down. I, I feel like he's aggravated right now because he actually figured him out, you know, because I'm sure Daryl thinks that he is like a puzzle no one can really uh no one can figure out basically and so he's sitting here speaking or listening to somebody that broke him down and basically uh was able to understand that you are the one that did this and you can't trick anybody <laughs> so he's sitting here 
with this like aggressive facial expression. I mean, he really does this whenever anyone speaks. So I guess I'm I'm really just guessing here that's what this is about, but maybe not. Now you said that you he had a briefing just prior to going back this. to the same Mosquito Police Department. Yes, ma'am. Did you have? Um, you said you had more information about the parade incident and also the domestic incident, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, overruled, his answer may stand. Next question. Did you know at that time prior to speaking with Mr. Brooks how many people had died during the parade incident? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, I did. And how many people was that at that time? Objection leading. Overruled. At that point, it was five. So did you confirm, again, personal information for the defendant? Uh, before starting the interview? Yes, I did. Did you read the, or him the Miranda form like you did the night before? Yes, I did. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 174. Now, is that the Miranda statement form that you completed on November 22nd with Mr. Brooks? Objection, we... Yes, it is. And what time was that completed? 12, 11 p.m. Um, what I, exhibit is that? 180, uh, 174. 174. 174. Um, and did you read that form to Mr. Brooks? Objection. What did you say? Overruled. Yes, I did. And did you read that form to him in its entirety? Yes, I did. I'd ask that Exhibit 174 be moved into evidence. Objection. Relevancy. Exhibit 174 is received. Now, when we look at Exhibit 174, it says spouse's name. It says Erica Patterson. Do you see that? Objection. Leading. Um, sustained it to the form of the question. You did not ask the publish. I did not. I just want to make sure that's what you were not looking to do. Correct. No. Okay. Thank um, you. There's a spot in this form that says spouse's name. Is that filled in? Yes. And what does it say? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. It says Erica Patterson. Did he say that they were married? He did not. He said um, that was his girlfriend, however. Okay. And he indicated he had children? Objection he did. leading. It's background foundational. It's... The witness may answer. The objection's overruled. Yes, he did. How many children did he have? Objection leading. Overruled. Three. Okay. And you read each of the five rights that are listed on this form? Yes, I did. And did he agree to speak with you? Yes, ma'am, he did. Okay. I would ask that Exhibit 174 be published to the jury. Objection. Let me see. The exhibit's already been received. Noting your objection, it's overruled. Permission to publish is granted. <laughs> Now, as that form is coming up in the jury box, just for the, the jurors to see, um, when you initially had contact with the defendant that morning, did you verify <coughs> if he had been fed? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. And had he, he been fed yes, dinner sir. the night before, breakfast that morning, lunch that afternoon? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes, he had. And was he complaining about any physical injuries? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Ah, uh, yes, he was continuing to complain about, <clears throat> excuse me, he was continuing to complain about um, the injury to his right shoulder, um, which he still at that time was asserting occurred when um, officers at the time of his arrest body slammed him. Now, with regard to the second interview, the one that took place on November 22nd, was that recorded? Yes, it was. And would it be fair to say that a uh, recorded interview was four hours, 55 minutes, and 30 seconds? Objection, you say. Overruled. Yes, that would be correct. Okay. And you've had the opportunity to listen to that interview? Four hours. Yes, I have. Speaking to Daryl for I'm going to go hours, through that though. interview. Um, with you, I'm not going to play That's a nightmare. Um, the whole five hours, um, but just portions of that. I'll stop it during um, during 
specific clips that I'm providing providing to Ms. Gussie, and we'll talk about it. Is that all right? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Before you do that, I'm told our interpreter will be here momentarily, and rather than you start, I think it would be best if we just take a short break till the interpreter's here. Is the witness here? Um, I believe he was and coming at 10. Oh, we okay. That's fine. Then, then I appreciate that additional information. Then we'll keep going. Sorry for the interruption. Um, let me see if maybe he's here early. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's not here yet. Okay. Then we will keep going and just let me know when the witness gets here. Okay. You can take this exhibit like, off the screen. If we can go to seven minutes and 30 seconds to 8 minutes and 20 seconds. Date. Now before she starts it, um, is this the interview room that was at the San Mosquito Police Department? Yes it is. Okay. And um, it's paused right now, oh, but um, who's in that room? Objection leader. <laughs> Overruled. The person in that room in the red t-shirt with the mask partially covering their face, longer braided appearing hair, is Daryl Edward Brooks. The same individual sitting to my left in this suit, jacket, shorter hair, and surgical mask. Okay. And the other two people depicted here? Uh, the person, as you would look to the screen to the left, is myself, and on the right is Detective Ben Stern. So again, going to seven minutes and 30 seconds. As Daryl will put it, I appreciate that extra commentary. I actually do. I'm glad he threw that in. But not with That's sound. the same person that's seated there. 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. So it now is at seven minutes and 30 seconds. If we can play until eight minutes and 20 seconds. Hang in the metal pieces on the... Um, the little machine thing that comes around, they take them, they, they, the pieces go through like this little steamer type machine thing and then they paint it and then they come back around and we just take them off the hook and just put them in the box, load them up, put them back on the truck. Oh. It was four on, three off, so that was more ideal because That's a great schedule. I, I mostly have my children the back half of the week. Sure. But since, since all this, I've been having them every day. So it was like, how old are your kids? Uh, my, my son is grown. My daughter, my oldest daughter is fourteen, and my youngest daughter is seven. You said your son, oldest son's grown. How old is he? He's eighteen. Okay. They all live with you then in Milwaukee. Well, my son doesn't. Your son doesn't. My son doesn't. But. Okay. All right. So we're going to start So initially, what were you speaking with uh, Mr. Brooks about when he was describing? Um, Doing something with metal. Objection leading, and I do not, not consent to being called that name. Overruled as to both objections, the witness may answer. Just about work. He was, uh, Mr. Brooks was explaining a job he had had prior. Uh, he indicated he was laid off due to the pandemic. Um, so it was just general conversation about his work history. Okay. And um, he talked about his kids. Um, do you recall that? Yes. And his two youngest kids, who did he say they lived with? Objection, the Overruled. Objection, the answer. Mr. Brooks was indicating they were living with him. However, uh, the investigation showed that not to be the case. Uh, of the two daughters, one lives down in Georgia in the Atlanta area, and the other lives in Iowa. Thank you. Now directing your attention to 14 minutes and 15 seconds into the interview. And I'd be playing that until 15 minutes and 48 seconds into the interview. It is currently at 14 minutes and 15 <coughs> seconds. Can we have those uh, timestamps again, please? Sure. 14 minutes and 15 seconds beginning to 15 minutes and 48 seconds. Thank you. I'd ask that that be played at this time. Go ahead. We're not on your couch that I got to read it, okay? Um, and I know you've, had, you've heard it before, so you can't understand that. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any questions before I start for me? Only thing I want to know is, what in the heck? Am I being charged with anything? Well, she's making some, like I said, alleged allegations against you, kind of, you know, for being physical. So that's what, you know, if that's BS, that's what I'm looking to hear from you. 
a photo piece, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of, we couldn't track her down, so that's, that's kind of where we're at. It's this typical back and forth stuff that guys like you go through with their baby mama all the time. And they're all, you know, there's a lot of guys out there in your spot, you know. <laughs> and a lot of times, you know, maybe it's, it's not always fair to them, but that's kind of what I I'm wish they had a law out. to where people could, if you do that shit, you should get in trouble. Sure. Yeah. Like, why? You shouldn't be able to just be like, oh, I'm pissed off, so I'm going to yeah. call and do this. Yep. I agree. Like that. I don't know what it is about listening to Daryl like express his inner thoughts and stuff that makes me want to fast forward so bad. It's just anytime I hear him expressing what his beliefs and opinions and all this stuff, like I just immediately, when it just goes on for too long, I'm like, oh my God, I want to skip so bad. <laughs> like, I'm not saying I'm going to, I'm just saying. <laughs> when he just talks a little too long, I, I can't stand listening to it. Especially when he's he's lying through his teeth this whole time. And just like you you hear the way that he like uh he he's just a terrible liar too. It's like the way that he behaves and like the super animated like movements. It's just weird to see and he thinks they're really buying this too. It's I don't know. I don't know. Why would you put me in that situation and then you know we're going to end up being together anyway? That's why would you do that? Trying to judge that credibility. Yep, yeah, and that's, that's total BS. So that's, what I, I'm, that's why we're sitting in here with you to try to, to siphon through, sift through the BS if that's what we got and just go from there. Easy, man. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, All right. Fucking girl, man. I said this last night too, didn't yeah. I? She get drunk and she, remember I kept saying that she fucking acts a fool and I'm the one that pays for it. Yep. Can you tell the jury a little bit about this? is a true clown show right here. This is a... <laughs> So in this clip here, I'm just explaining to Mr. Brooks um, the background of the domestic abuse allegations that, you know, officers had received from Erica Patterson um, and that I was looking to get basically clarity on that, his side of the story on that, um, have him help me understand what aspects of it may or may not be true, and um, just walk me through what had occurred between, between the two of them. Again, although we're approximately um 15 minutes into the interview have you mentioned anything about the parade incident or any victims objection the overrule the witness may answer i had not said anything about that at this point point. and why was that so what i wanted to do with this interview as i stated in my earlier testimony uh, i wanted to start with the smaller things and get to the bigger things um the parade incident with the injuries of the individuals and the loss of life was obviously very serious. Um, part of what I believe as an investigator is very important is gauging credibility in the, in the interview. And one of the ways you do that is you need to be careful. Obviously, at some point, if I'm going to take Mr. Brooks to jail, I have to tell him what he's being charged with. But I want to be very careful in giving too much information early on um, so that I'm not leading him so that I'm not giving him the opportunity based on information to create lies. Um, I want to see how he reacts to things to help me gauge whether he's being truthful. And I found starting with the smaller aspect and seeing how truthful he was with that could help lead me into the more serious allegations and see if he was going to be truthful about those things as well. Right. And what's weird about this is that daryl's belief when it comes to these types of things is that you're supposed to just outright tell them so if you didn't just tell me as soon as i got here what i'm here for therefore this whole process is illegal and it's like where do you where do you get these types of ideas from i mean clearly it's like the sovereign citizen stuff that somebody fed him here in prison um but it's like his view or his perspective of like what's supposed to happen when he interacts with the officer or yeah just the officer anybody in law enforcement is that they're just supposed to tell him every single thing like that they have like every bit of information 
they're supposed to just tell him right here and there and then give him the the chance to like but like he said lie his way out of it it's just really weird so i know for a fact i can't say i know for a fact but like i know that that's gonna come up in the cross exam because he's asked other officers this so i know he's gonna ask now as i watched the the snippet of the video that we showed at one point you had indicated you know guys like you get you know get into these kind of situations with girls like that or something to that effect you recall that interaction in this video yes i do what do you mean by that or what were strike that what were you trying to establish by making that statement again with as i had stated in my earlier testimony part of what i believe is important is simply building a rapport with an individual again you always have with any individual and in any interrogation um, there's the natural barrier that can occur with them seeing you as a law enforcement officer. Um, I've been doing this job for 18 years. Um, that was not intended on any way upon my part to suggest to Mr. Brooks that everything his girlfriend was saying was a lie. I just wanted him to feel comfortable telling me the truth, whatever that truth was, um, man to man or person to person, human being to human being. Lying. Um, directing your did he really just say lying in the this is insane okay so we know now he does feel upset I mean he's upset with everybody here he's gonna <laughs> when this cross exam comes up he's gonna basically just try to give him the <laughs> hold on I can't even put a sentence again <laughs> he just uttered lying into the microphone Okay, I'm just going to let it play. Attention because... to um, 30 minutes and 26 seconds and playing this clip until 40 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, let's do that now. Objection. Um, wasn't it just said we was 15 minutes in the interview? Why is it playing from 30 minutes? Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled again. That's 30, 26, you said? 30, 26 to 40, 30. To 40, 30. Like, I don't know if Daryl thought they were actually friends or something. Like, he's sitting here confiding in him, and he's like, I can't believe you would actually just <laughs> get me arrested after I told you everything about my situation. Sick stuff, man. Now, what brought you to Waukesha yesterday? How did you get out here? I was meeting up with a friend to watch the Pepper game. Okay. That's the only reason why I was, was out here. Where did you go to watch the game? To a friend named uh, Stephanie. Her house, a bar? Or... A house. And yeah, I don't mean to make you uncomfortable or anything, but what's the address there? What's I have on no there? idea about what we saw. I don't know the street. What was I it don't... near? I know you had to see something near it. Uh, so what was it near? Like a gas station. Have you been to the house before? No. Never before? No. What's Stephanie's last name? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. When did you guys set this up? Um, maybe a couple of days ago. Okay. Like I said, I, I have a few friends. I have a few friends in Milwaukee that have people out here, so. Okay. It's not, I don't, like I said last night, I don't know the streets in Waukesha. It's not where I usually hang out at, so I, I couldn't say, well, this street, this street, and this, you know, I couldn't. All right. Stephanie, like a friend of yours or like a friend of a friend? A, a friend of a friend, mutual okay. friend. And what she your last like, name was? I have no idea. How long have you known her? That was my first time meeting her. So, so how did you get the number to know the house to go to? A friend. A friend. <laughs> so how did you get to her house? My friend. I went with my friend. Okay, who's that? Uh, my friend. I don't really want to say his name. I don't know if that's going to incriminate him in anything. So. Okay, so let's go with this. How did you come? I if he said you didn't do anything, why is he not going to give his uh, his friends that you see? No, he's okay. dire after yesterday in Waukesha. 
makes no sense. Talk to her. Now, I don't know everything that went on, and I'm not saying I believe everything she told the other officers. How did you come to meet with her in Waukesha, one? And two, you say you don't know Waukesha, but where did you meet her? A gas station, a park? I know you met her. Where did you meet her? What what happened yesterday? Yeah, so, because if this is BS, like you say, and I know you met her, what happened? I met her. What happened when you met her? Where did you meet her? Let's start with that. By a gas station. Okay. I don't know <laughs> what I was supposed to be getting some money from her. How did, okay. For what? Um, it was the rest of my money that she had of mine that she was holding for me. Okay, how much? Um, it was supposed to be $350. Okay. And what did she, why did she have it? Why, why was she holding well, it? She, she had been holding it for me for a few weeks now. But like I said, I hadn't seen her. She had seen right. my mom she holding, Why did she have it? Why was she holding it for you? She was just holding it for me because I told her to hold it for me. But this was, it didn't have anything to do with, this was weeks ago she had been holding the money. And because I had no contact with her, I couldn't tell her. And my mom wasn't going to let her come to the house to bring it. Mm-hmm. And I told her, look, man, if I'm going to be out there, I'll meet up with you and, and get the money. But I'm not hanging out with you. I'm not having sex with you. And she was just like, oh, you want to keep? I'm like, I'm not going to do none of that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm not supposed to be around you. I get that. I understand that. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not supposed to be around you. I love you to death, man. You're my baby mama. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't supposed to be like a hangout thing. I told her, I'm like, I'm out here. And she's like, oh, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? And I'm like, look, I'll meet up with you to get the money and, you know, give you a hug or whatever. But she was like, well, gee, I need something. I'm like, no, we can't do it all, all that. I'm not going to have sex with you. I'm not going to hang out with you. Or none of that. All right. So you told her you weren't you weren't going to do any of that stuff. No. How did you set the meeting up? Did you did you talk to her on the phone? I don't know if anybody remembers this. I said in a previous video, listening to this dude talk is like FBI torture. It really should be considered that because now he just okay. I'm not even going to comment on what he just said, but like when you hear him explain this story. You try to process what it is he's saying, and none of it makes any sense. But, like, we're stuck here listening to what he's saying, and we're for, like, I'm, right now, I feel bad for the detectives there in the room that have to sit here and listen to this, you know, which I'm sure, you know, they're probably used to this type of thing, but it's like, you sit here, and you're listening to this story, and it's like, none of this makes any sense. And he's still rambling. Like, he's, he's... A person that, like, he's a nervous talker. The more that he sees that it's not making sense or, like, he feels like he don't understand them, like, he, he tries to jam more, like, details into it. And, yeah. But this is gross. I'm just going to let it play. I talked to her. She, I don't think she said anything about that. So just, I mean, if she's BS, how did you... How did yeah, because I didn't... With I didn't... She... This is what she does. If well, she hold on one second. Hold on, one thing at a time. How did you set the meeting with her? How do I verify? That's what, that's what I'm saying. She, if she can't get in touch with me, that's what she'll do. She'll go to social medias and do all this and try to okay. talk to people and all this and that. I got in contact with her through a mutual friend that we both know. And I was like, okay, tell her I'm out in Waukesha or whatever. And I meet up with her to get the money. And then she put us on the call. And she was just like, where you at? Call? Yeah. And she was just like, where you at? I'm like, look, I don't know where I'm at. Do you still got that money? She's like, yeah, I want to give you the money. And I want to, I want to do this and do that. I'm like, no, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to hang out with you. I'm going to meet up with you, get the money, give you a hug and kiss. We'll talk later. Was it still daylight? It was still daylight. It was still okay. daylight. So was, after that. this was... I think the game was still on. Yeah, it was on. So the game was still on. Left stuff and he used to go. Yep. Okay. The game was still on. So I was like, fuck it. You know what I mean? I want to see you. I ain't seen you in like a month. 
You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to lie and say, man, that's my baby mama. I love this woman. But I can't hang out with you. I can't do anything with you, you know, that type of thing, deal, and whatever the case may be. But, yeah. that. And this is on your cell phone? The three-way call, obviously, it's your cell phone because you're not no, home, right? My friend's phone. Your friend's phone. Yeah. But yesterday, so do you have your phone? No. That's what I'm saying. No. So who is the friend whose phone you were using to talk to get her on a three-way call? I don't want to say his name because I don't want to. Okay, I guess. So you saw her, though. Right? That makes no sense. Her. Okay. So how did the conversation with her end? With me walking off and her being pissed off that I didn't want to hang out with her. I said, look, I'm not supposed to be around you. I'm gone. Okay. When she Which said, car oh, did you use to get out she here? said, I didn't, I didn't have a car. No, whose car did you use to get to Waukesha? My friend, my friend is the one that said he was going to go hang out and watch the Packer game. I said, I'm going to go with. Okay. Whose car did you use to get out to Waukesha? I didn't use anybody's car. Where does your friend live? My friend, friend lives in Milwaukee. So you, you didn't walk to Waukesha. Whose car no, did you guys use? My friend. I just said my what friend. What type of car is he? Uh, he doesn't know that. He's trying either. to figure out how you got here. Yeah, I know, but it seemed like you trying to like spin me up or something. Like I'm just asking how you got here. Whose car did you drive out here? I didn't drive at all. Whose <laughs> car did you come out here in? My friend. Okay. Right. What kind of um, like? Yeah, I know, but it seemed like you trying to like spin me up or something. Like I'm just asking, he is trying so hard. Did drive out here? I didn't drive at all. Not to associate okay. himself with the vehicle. Here? My friend. Okay. Right, what kind of car is it? So here's the thing. But he can't tell okay. who the friend is, what um, kind of car he had. Obviously, you know, she's coming at us. I told her she's talking about some domestic-related issues, okay? Um, you know, and I don't know if she's on BS. I don't know if she's not. I'm telling you. Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I don't want you to get... Yeah, because you know, Hold on, let me finish. You know, I don't He's like a frantic... I'm just right now trying to figure out how you get out here. So I got to step out with my partner for a minute. Just relax. Don't, I want you to get you all nervous, okay? But, you know, I'm not trying to be confrontational, but I, I don't think when you meet her out in Waukesha and you're not from Waukesha, I think a reasonable question is to ask, how did you get out here? Yeah. Whether you drove, someone else drove. And if so, when you got out here, what type of car you were in? So just... Um, Every hour or so, my boss, he knows we're out here. I just got to call him and say, yeah, we're talking. I'll call you back later. Just got to step out, throw in a line with him, and we'll come back. Just chill out here, enjoy your soda. We'll be right back. All right? Sound good? Okay. So we done talking or? No, no, no. We'll no, 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 come back. Just chill out. And we'll be back. We just got to make that call. That. So I just got to make that call. That check-in call. All right? In the middle of the conversation. Well, do you want to tell me about the car? We'll just go another couple minutes. Yeah, but I'm, I'm... I mean, just, I got to call him. I can come back, but I just... All I... Listen, I'm, I'm willing to... Listen, Carpenter, you've been straight up with me. You've been straight up with me, right? Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is I just want to know what I'm looking at and if I can just notify my girls. That's it. I don't have a problem with talking to you guys at he all. I just want to know him. what am I looking at. That's what we have to start. She called about some domestic abuse-related stuff. No, I didn't talk to her myself. I told you that at the start. You said she was crazy. We talked about Y'all know that. Y'all talked yeah. to the woman. No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, other I apologize. You talk. Slow down. Other officers that we listened to the interview. Slow down, Did, Darrell. Did she look beat up? Did she look like, dude, Darrell? Like, come on now. That's so man. insane. All right. That is so insane. I mean, the levels of lowness, you really can't, at this point, be surprised by it. Like, he's told I don't even know how many lies just within <laughs> this short amount of time. But I really do feel like he he's upset with the detective here that's interviewing him because he felt offended at the fact that he told him, like, or he felt like he understood. Like, you see how now he's like, oh, you, 
you guys talk to her. You know how she is. So he, he's one of these types of people. He just wants you to take his word for literally everything. And I really do feel like he thought that like, oh, the detectives are kind of my friends. They should be on my side, you know, knowing what they know and that, you know, I seem like a decent guy, which he doesn't at all. Like just when I hear the way he's interacting with them right now, how frantic he is, and he's basically bouncing off the walls in here. It's like I would immediately, uh, I don't know. It's just like a, he he's emitting like a weird vibe, as I, <laughs> I always put it that way. But he has a weird vibe about him where it's like he's just bouncing off the walls right now. Like you can tell he's trying desperately to distract and to make you feel like, oh, uh, to lull you into like a sense of a false sense of security. Oh, I'm I'm just a good guy trying to get by type thing. I don't I don't know. We can't explain it to you if you keep talking over us. You know what I'm saying? All right. He's I always talk talking over somebody. I didn't see her. Okay. Now. Okay, with regard to that clip, sir, um, we. We have a lot of talk about her, meeting her. Who Who is her? Objection leading. Overruled. The her in this case is Erica Patterson. So you, did you have some conversations with Mr. Brooks before this clip about his relationship with Ms. Patterson? Objection leading. I <laughs> don't consent to being called that name. The objections are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. Okay. Now, at the end of this video, um, not the end of the video, but the end of this clip. Again, he is saying, what am I looking at? Do you recall him saying that in this video? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, I do. Was this a theme throughout this five hour video? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it was. Did he... You had stated initially when he came into the room, he had complained about some shoulder pain? Yes, he did. Did that continue throughout the interview? Objection, relevancy. Overruled, the witness may answer. So, I would say what happened is it went on and off. So at this point here, um, the interview at this point in time was what I would describe as laid back. Uh, a lot of it was simply getting background about the overall relationship between Mr. Brooks and Ms. Patterson. Um, during that time, he was fine. Um, he was moving his arms, as you could see in this clip. He wasn't complaining about pain. Um, what I noticed... I should have paid more attention to that. I thought for a second to pay attention, and then like I got lost in the actual interview. But I, I feel like I do remember him moving his arms quite a bit, which is crazy. And made me question the legitimacy, legitimacy of the injury before ever actually even seeing the body cam. As I noted at times of stress, later in this interview, as I continue to push on a vehicle, um, I can see, as you could see here, I believe, it can be seen here in this interview, talking about the car made him uncomfortable. Complaints about the pain would suddenly come back. How about the uh, request to be told what he's looking at? Did you see any correlation between that and what was occurring during the interview? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, that, um, as I say, that continued throughout the entirety of the interview. And you know, really, at this point, was a little unusual because um, Right now, he had been told he was looking at the domestic. The parade hadn't come up. So uh, a reasonable person, I believe, at this point of the interview knew what they were looking at. They were looking at a domestic abuse incident. Um, why simply asking him how he got out here as far as transportation made him nervous was um, alarming. An example of him, you said that you had seen him using his arms. Feral laughing? In this clip. Is Did you hear that? Objection. That? 
an example of like, him that you pure said that clown. you... See, he's... It's weird. I feel like he thinks that doing that makes it seem as if he was never nervous or something like that. It's like you you pretty much confirmed it just by doing that. Like, yep, you're intimidated right now. And uh, you definitely were nervous in that moment. But I can remember, like, coming across people like this in school where it's like they try desperately to overcompensate and to seem like super super macho in a way where it's like okay the way that you're going about it isn't even the way like somebody that's actually confident in themselves would behave daryl's a, a cartoon character you had seen him using his arms a little bit in this clip is that correct objection leading so stand us to the form of the question um you had stated that um what observations did you make during this clip about the use of his right arm he would move it from side to side. So, I mean, if both his arms would come out like this and move. Um, he would make mannerisms when he was speaking with both arms that were, to me, what a person would do when they're normally conversing. And um, it would seem unusual to make those movements if he was, in fact, in as much pain as he was claiming to us he was in. Now I'm gonna just for the, let the record reflect that um, when you had indicated he'd move his arms this way, you moved both your right and left arm out um, parallel to the ground at about shoulder level. Would that be accurate? Yes, it would. Okay. I'm going to show you a clip beginning at 52 minutes and 15 seconds <coughs> to 52 minutes and 42 seconds, so a very short clip. All right, let me pay attention to the Bad, arms this time. She makes this complaint when she gets you back. Yeah, and it's in like, why did you do this to me? It, and I, I promise you, I, I promise you, this. my right hand to God Almighty on the throne with Jesus next to his side, the woman is going to sit up there and say, I was drunk, I was mad, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, now I got to go through everything. Do you Just see this right now? Do that. Why did you do this to me? She thinks she's going to come back to us. Look at how hard he's throwing. So we his saw arms some motions with his <laughs> arms during this clip. Would that be an accurate statement? Objection relevancy. Overruled the witness may answer. Can you explain to the jury what you observed? So I observed uh, Mr. Brooks move his arms to his side, above his head, um, his right arm almost fully above his head at points. Um, <laughs> Quite frankly, showing that arm seemed to have full range of motion. Now, you had testified yesterday. Um, you had seen a video or a still shot from a video, and you identified the defendant driving a red SUV. Do you recall that testimony? Objection, leading. Um, overall, mm -hmm. the witness may answer. Yes, I do. And when the defendant was telling you about his friend bringing him out in a tan Kia, I think he said. Um, did you believe that to be true? Objection. Um, sustained. It's for the jury to determine credibility. Did the you will not answer that? Did you ever see any video of the defendant driving in a tan Kia during the time of the parade? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer that. No, I did not. Directing uh, the video to one hour, four minutes, 30 seconds, <coughs> and playing until one hour, 18 minutes, and two seconds. Before we go to this clip, I know we have the witness, I've been told, and the interpreter uh, available. So I would like to uh, put further testimony and watching of these clips on hold. <coughs> Um, we do need to take a witness out of order in order to accommodate the interpreter that the court has arranged for. So, Detective Carpenter, you may... Look at Daryl's facial expression. This dude is a, uh, he's a clown. Excuse momentarily. This is insane, though. He, you saw how he was moving his arms? Like, he's throwing his arms around, like, aggressively, too. It's like, dude, really? <clears throat> This is ridiculous, but now it seems Mr. like Ryan he's... Ryan would accompany the witness. This will be Mr. Uh, Juan Marquez being called by 
Mr. Brooks. Okay, so this is Juan Marquez. I'm actually interested to see this because can you imagine what a nightmare it must be to have what Daryl is saying <laughs> interpreted for you? I just want to see like how the interpreter is going to look like. Okay, <laughs> how do I say this? Especially when you get to like the subject matter jurisdiction, and I don't know. Mr. Brooks is calling uh, Juan Marquez. Is that true, sir? Mr. Brooks, are you calling Mr. Marquez as a witness at this time? Uh, yeah. All right, Mr. Marquez, if you would accompany the interpreter, I'll to the witness stand. Oh boy. Let's buckle in for this. When you get there, certified um, the <laughs> clown show right here. Okay. Do you swear that you will interpret truly, accurately, completely, and impartially in accordance with the standards prescribed by law, the Code of Ethics for Court Interpreters? And Wisconsin yeah. guidelines for I do. Certified Spanish interpreter Patrick Ryan. Thank you. And Mr. Marquez, would you That's please raise your right hand to be sworn by my clerk? Do you solemnly swear so that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you Say Yes. Please have a seat. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have an instruction to read to you. No matter what language people speak, they have the right to have their testimony heard and understood. You are about to hear a witness in which an interpreter will translate for one of the witnesses. The interpreter is required to remain neutral. The interpreter is required to translate between English and Spanish accurately and impartially to the best of the interpreter's skill and judgment. The evidence you are to consider is only that provided through the official court interpreter. Although some of you may know the non-English language used, it is important that all jurors consider the same evidence. Therefore, you must base your decision on the evidence presented in the English translation. You must disregard any different meaning of the non-English words. You must evaluate interpreted testimony as you would any other testimony. That is, you must not give interpreted testimony any greater or lesser weight than you would if the witness had spoken English. Keep in mind that a person might speak some English without speaking it fluently. That person has the right to the services of an interpreter. Therefore, you shall not give greater or lesser weight to a person's translated testimony based on your conclusions, if any, regarding the extent to which that person speaks English. With that, sir, the first thing I will ask you to do is to state and spell your first and last names for the record. Juan Marquez. Juan Marquez. J-U-A-N. J-U-A-N. M-A-R-Q. U E Z M A R Q U E Z. Thank you. Go ahead. Here we go. Sir, you may question this witness. Uh, good morning, Mr. Marquez. Uh, you were at the parade on November 21st, 2021, is that correct? That is correct. And do you recall who you were there with that day? With my wife and with my son. And were you marching in the parade that day? Say yes. Do you remember who you were marching with? Was it a uh, particular group? Un grupo particular. Say yes. 
Do you recall who that group was? Se acuerda quién quién era el grupo con el cual estaba desfilando? Sí. Yes. <coughs> and at some point, you felt something hit your leg. Y en un momento usted escuchó, usted sintió que algo le, le pegó su su pierna. Es correcto. That's correct. So, hey, sorry to pause so early in, into the testimony, but it's like there has been so much time now in between when they first talked about Juan Marquez to now. So, was Juan Marquez, was he basically a, a parade goer that was also injured by Daryl? But why did he, why did Daryl specifically call for him? Uh, see, this is why I wish, like, sometimes... Like in between these videos, I don't look anything up. I I don't look at any of the videos or like content around this. But maybe just to like refresh my memory on exactly why he wanted Juan Marquez here. I probably should have read something or just looked something up. But I don't I don't understand why this is happening. And do you right remember now. what that was? Un vehículo. A vehicle. And did you see the vehicle? Your vehicle? No. No. At, at some point, did you uh, go to Freighter Hospital? In a moment, you step aside and look at Freighter. Sí. Yes. And were you inter interviewed by any law enforcement at that time? <laughs> yes. He's not asking a single Do you recall if it was uh, regular officers or FBI? FBI. FBI. <clears throat> Do you recall telling them that the truck was black? Grounds. Um, the objection is sustained as to leading. Please rephrase your question. Do you remember what color you told them the truck was? No recuerdo. I don't remember. So it would be fair to say you don't recall seeing anything at that time? Se puede decir que usted no se acuerda de nada en ese tiempo? No. No? I'm really trying to understand, like... Alright. I'm going to wait for, for later on. And did you, at any time, file a claim related to this incident? En algún momento usted hizo un reclamo con respecto a este incidente? No recuerdo. I don't remember. He's going straight to the sovereign citizen stuff. Do you know if anyone you were with filed a, a claim related to this incident? No lo sé. I don't know. Oh boy. Scratching out <coughs> questions again. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this incident? Yes. Any reason why you wouldn't file a claim since you considered yourself an injured party? Grounds. 
uh, y tiene durante el sexenio. ¿Alguna razón por la cual no archivaría un reclamo? Uh, there's an objection. It's sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Por favor, diga la pregunta de nuevo. ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? Oh, there's an objection. You don't need to answer. Oh, tiene que contestar. Could you repeat the question, please? Please rephrase, Mr. Brooks. Por favor, diga la pregunta en diferente manera, señor Brooks. It's kind of hard to rephrase. Um, what was the point of saying that? What did he think she was going to say? Oh, let me rephrase it for you then. Okay. <laughs> Attorney. Did you intend on uh, filing a claim related to this case? Objection. Hold on, there's been an objection. You said that with no confidence whatsoever. <laughs> Your Honor, first of all, I, this witness testified he doesn't recall filing a claim, so I'm not sure what the relevance then would be of the question. The question was, did he intend to? But what's the point of that? I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Do you recall at any time filing a police report? Yes. And was that with uh, local law enforcement, if you recall? I don't remember. Did anyone, uh, did any law enforcement from that report follow up with you at any time? Yes. And do you recall what agency that was? No. No. Do you recall at any time being notified that you could possibly testify in this incident? Could you repeat the question? Sure. Um, at, do you recall at any time being notified that it was a possibility that you could testify in this incident? This is what I'm talking about. No. No. The sovereign citizen. Uh, were you stuff, ever subpoenaed in court? relation to this incident? Sí. Yes. Do you recall who you re uh, received this subpoena from? From the office of the district attorney. And do you recall when that was? Se acuerda cuando fue? Mes, un mes y días. A month and a few days. And following being subpoenaed, or following, rather, to strike that back, um, after receiving the subpoena, did you follow up with the district attorney's office at any time after? Después de recibir entonces el citatorio, recibió algún tipo de seguimiento por medio de la oficina fiscal después del incidente? Sí. Yes. Do you recall whom you spoke with? Here we go. Susan? Susan. Oh, boy. Would that be referring to Attorney Opper, who is seated at this table? Yes. You know what's even funnier about that? Earlier, when he was throwing a, a little tantrum, 
Judge Darrow told him that you have the right to speak to witnesses just as they do. So she literally told him to his face that you can also speak to these people just like they have been speaking to them this whole time. But yet he's still trying to work this angle into it of uh, something's going on here. Like they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be speaking to these witnesses, you know, outside of the trial. It's, that makes it even funnier at this point that like he's still trying to do that. It's it's really ridiculous. And were you at any time uh, informed of a plaintiff in this incident? Objection relevance. Browns. Sustained. Okay. Were you at any time notified that there was a plaintiff in this incident? Objection. Grounds. The objection is sustained. The witness does not need to answer. Do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this incident? Objection. Grounds. The objection is sustained. The witness does not need to answer. So I guess he's wrapping up here. Do you recall ever seeing, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> do you ever call, <clears throat> sorry, do you recall ever seeing or reading a complaint in this matter? No, I don't recall seeing or I'm still not sure why he called for this witness. Um, I don't know if maybe he was really, I'll just pause it here. I don't know if he was really like banking on him uh, saying the color of the vehicle was black again. Like he was, he really wanted him to say that. But it's like you really called him here just for that one moment. It's like I don't understand what the purpose of doing all of this was. It other than just like inconveniencing him to come here like he didn't see the vehicle or he did he just didn't get a good look at it and um it's weird it's just another instance of him like playing with people's lives pretty much but maybe some of you in the comments know like if you know um why he basically was why he basically called him here like please let me know because i'm kind of confused at this point going back to the the actual incident would it be fair to say that at the time you were you were very confused could you repeat the question uh going back to the time of the incident <laughs> at the parade, would it be fair to say that you were confused at the time? No. No. Any reason why you don't recall seeing anything? Could you repeat the question? Any reason why you don't recall seeing anything? I did not see the vehicle. It just passed by. I'm starting to think that is the reason he called him here. Because he didn't see it or he just... Said the right, color was different. Clarification on, on the, his last response. If I can inquire, when you say that 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 passed the vehicle, does it mean that that the vehicle was accident or that the vehicle passed by you? Okay. When you say that it passed 
pasó el vehículo o que había pasado como ocurrió? Ocurrió, me pegó y, uh, y pasó yeah. rápido. For clarification, um, the interpreter inquired if he meant the vehicle passed by or if the incident happened. Uh, the defendant interpreter for clarification the interpreter would like to say that he meant that it just happened that the vehicle just hit him rather than i believe the interpreter translated what he said as it passed by what he meant to say is that it actually happened rather than passed by so for that point of clarification for the record thank you Daryl probably still isn't going to follow up on that. He's just going to move on. It's pretty much <laughs> off the paper. Not pretty much. That's what it is. Also, for clarification, just, just so we're clear for the record. I don't consent to this name. You don't recall actually seeing the vehicle. También, sí, vamos a estar clarificando por el acta. No se acuerda que vio el vehículo. No. No. No further questions. No más preguntas. Any questions, Attorney Basie? Very strange. Good morning, Mr. Rekhez. Good morning. On November 21st of last said, year, were you walking with the Catholic communities of Waukesha? El 21 de noviembre del año pasado. Desfilando con Catholic communities of Waukesha. Es correcto. That's correct. Hold on. What was the objection? You have to speak up. I couldn't hear what you said. I have a code, so I can't. Mr. Brooks, was there an objection? Yeah, yes, there was an objection. I can't even remember now. Well, if you were objecting on relevance, I have some more confidence in yourself. his answer may stand. It wasn't relevant. So he has no confidence in his objections. If you hear the word objection, please wait until I rule on the objection before you answer. Thank Judge Darrow is not. <laughs> she's not happy today with Daryl. So we did it. Answer the question? Sí, contestó la pregunta. Sí. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Muy bien, gracias. You were with your wife and your son? Estaba con su esposa y su hijo. Sí. Yes. And your son's name uh -huh. is David Marquez? Objection leading. Over su hijo es David Marquez? Overruled. You called the witness. The state may lead. Go ahead and answer. Contesta la pregunta, por favor. Si puede contestar. What's that mean? Go ahead and answer, sir. Contesta, por favor. Sí. Yes. You testify that at some point you were struck by a vehicle. Objection. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. yes. Did you have any warning before you were struck by the car? Objection. Hearsay. You know Daryl is loving the fact that it's being slowed down like this from what he's doing. Like, this is what he always wanted. To basically every question that's asked, he can slow it down to like a snail's pace like this. So now it's even... So now there is yet another um, obstacle that has to be paid attention to before the question can be answered altogether. So it used to just be him when he objects and you have to wait for Judge Darrow to determine whether or not, you know, you can answer it. Now, he has to wait for not only for her to make a, a ruling on it, but for it to be interpreted to him. It's, it's insane. The, but this is the clown show he always dreamed of, to, like, have something pretty much like this happening. This is what he Overruled. really wanted. Overruled. The witness may answer. No. No. Did you hear a horn honking? Objection. You're saying. Overruled, the witness may answer. No. No. Sir, I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 161. 
Go ahead. Do you, can you see that picture on the screen in front of you? T. Yes. And do you see the approximate area where you landed after the vehicle struck you? Objection leading. Overruled. The statement lead. It's not their witness. Go ahead and answer, sir. So when he's, so I can lead too if it's not my release? No. Well, hold on. We'll get to that later. There's been an objection. I'm overruling it. Go ahead and re-ask your question. They can do what they want. Do you, do you see the area in which you landed after the vehicle struck you? See, yes. The, um, I'd ask that, uh, this, Exhibit the admitted to evidence, which is 161, and published to the jury. Objection. Um, we can't even see. We can't even see who who's what, what exactly is the state referring to. You can't even see who it is. Just state your objection. It's overruled. Um, be overruled. Because it's attempt to testify, but if the state could just ask uh, a few more foundational question or questions, please. Certainly. What, when you met with the state, did you review some video of the parade? Objection hearsay. Overruled the witness by answer. Yes. And after reviewing that video, were you able to determine a proctor? the area in which your body landed after you were struck by the car. Objection, hearsay, and leading. Overruled as to both. You may answer, sir. Yes. And do you see that area on this exhibit? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Okay. Yes. I'd ask that this uh, exhibit be admitted to evidence and published for the jury. Objection. What's the relevancy? Uh, the objections are noted. They are overruled. And exhibit 161 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Ridiculous. All right. Write this in my notes. I really hope he gets kicked out at some point. And I've been it's indicated that because that is now being seen in the jury uh, box. Mm -hmm. Sir, the screen in front of you is a, a touch screen. Can you circle the area in which you believe you landed? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer. Let me say where they believe. Either you know or you don't. Say yes. Can you do that now? I hope he gets kicked out though, because it's like he's getting more unhinged now as we're going along. I don't know what Mr. Brooks just mumbled, but it's not his turn to answer, ask questions. There was no objection. The jury will disregard that. And this would be Please exhibit 161A. And we'll screen capture that. Exhibit 161A has been captured. Are you moving that in? I am. And exhibit 161 is received. 61A. Thank you. And do you see anyone that you recognize standing in that area? Objection leading. <coughs> Overruled. The state may lead. It's cross-examination of your witness, sir. So I can lead on uh, cross-examination, then? I direct your attention to 90611 sub 3, sir. I'm on cross-examination. I'm not going to answer that. Go ahead, uh, so that's, sir. You may your answer. determination that you don't have to answer that? If I don't understand something? The jury will disregard the comments being made by Mr. Brooks. Judicial determination, okay. Go ahead and answer the question if you recall it, sir. Me puede repetir la pregunta? Could you repeat the question? Yes. <clears throat> do you see, actually, do you see David, um, your son, in that picture? Objection. That was. Yes. 
And is he wearing... So my objection is not going to be noted. The objection is overruled. The state chose to ask a different question. That's fine. And is he seated um, near some blue chairs wearing a blue jacket? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Chair. Yes. And sir, is that you laying down and you can see in this... Um, Picture your legs and they're hanging into the roadway. Objection leading. Witness may answer. Overruled. Yes. Now, is that where you were walking when you were struck from behind? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. No. No. How far from the position that you recalled yourself to be at when you were walking did you land? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Between 15 and 20 feet. So your body flew through the air between 15 and 20 feet. Is that Objection what your testimony leading. is? Okay. Yes. Sorry, I didn't rule on the objection, but it is overruled and his answer may stand. Was David also struck by a vehicle during the parade? I knew he was going to get mad yes. about that. I knew he was going to get mad about that. He received injuries as well? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled, you may answer. Okay. Yes. Can you describe what your injuries were, sir? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Okay. Yes. What were they? Objection leading. At this point, he really, really, really should get kicked out because his objections, they never make any sense. But it's like right now, especially with it with the added barrier of the fact that you know what he's saying or like what the prosecution is saying has to be translated it's like he's literally just disrupting as much as he possibly can like i oh, i hope he gets kicked out today i hope he does i hope he gets kicked out so la fibula my fibula Ligamentos. And ligaments. Your fibula was broken? Objection. Speculative. Overruled as to both. That's the witness may answer. T. Yes. And you had torn ligaments? Objection leading. Overruled. Did you say that in the question before? T. Yes. And were those both in the same leg? Objection leading. Okay. Sorry, yes. over, overruled. If we yeah, of course. just wait when there's an objection, um, I'm overruling it. It's relevant. He's it's having not. a little baby boy tantrum about the fact that just like she has to wait for him to hear the question, he wants her to just immediately like jump on it. Just like, dude. You know the situation that she's dealing with right now. He has to understand the question, and then she has to understand. Uh, she's processing what the prosecute like. There's so many <laughs> wires being crossed right now. It's like why is okay, but we know why he's uh, leading acting this the witnesses' way. answers. He may doesn't stand. care. I mean, yeah, you overrule every objection. And the jury will disregard the additional commentary made by Mr. Brooks at this time. It's additional misconduct at his final. Your objections are pointless. And so. which leg was that, sir? Objection, accent, answer. Cry about it. Overruled. You may answer. My left leg. Did you have to have surgery on that leg? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Yes. Just one? Two. That's not going to work either. 
Mr. Brooks, you Mark are Brooks. advised to stop with the commentary. No, I'm going to say what I want. You called this witness. I'm going to take a break right now and excuse the jury and this witness. I think All he's right. going to get kicked out. What you're doing is judicial misconduct. Judicial I, misconduct. I hope he gets hold on. We'll see you in a second. But you don't want the jury to hear the truth. That's not fair to the jury. They have a right to hear everything. Ridiculous, man. I'm not going to sit here and let you fix, fix the trial because you don't want to tell the truth to the jury. Mr. Brooks, please stop. No, they ain't no please. You are nothing. being disruptive. Ain't you no are please. being disrespectful. You always going to find some reason down. to say somebody's being disruptive because they want the truth to be out there. Man, quit it. You're supposed to be Mr. the judge. Mr. Brooks, I'm advising you that continued interruptions will result in you forfeiting your right to be okay, present in this court. Under what, under what law in fact can you do that? Illinois versus Allen, Okay, sir. but the fourth, the fourth uh, option that you made up that's not even in the uh, law? Mr. Because Brooks, you can't do that. I need to make a By law, you can't do that. I need to make and you know you can't. All right, I'm going to um, excuse everyone. Mr. Can, Brooks is being be. removed from the courtroom. He will continue in the neighboring courtroom. Uh, please make sure he has his objection signed and a pad of paper. So is that so that he can so is that holding me in contempt? And I will make a ruling when I. And, uh, so are you holding me in up. contempt? Is that civil or criminal? I am so happy he's getting kicked out. I really wish that this just would be not that he like frustrates Judge Judge Darrow so much, but just I just wish that every trial would or not every trial, every day would start with him in the other courtroom. Cause this is ridiculous. Like he knows what he's doing. We'll skip ahead here. Let me see. Oh, look, they're showing them actually load them up in the other courtroom. Let me see. I can jump over right to that. Uh-oh. <laughs> we're, we're getting an inside peek of the baby boy tantrum. Let's hear it. Let me see. His baby bottle's not in here. I think that's why. I'll do the same thing every time, man. Every time he's very upset now. The jury, somebody got to get put out of the courtroom. That's contempt. That's contempt of court. I'm not. I'm not ignorant, man. I, 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 I still can hear it. You can't, you can't just make up no law, make up a fourth option. I, I don't want them right there, man. You want them on the other side over on the right? Where do you want them? Put them wherever you want. I'm guessing they're talking about his boxes. I would still put them in that spot. Is it back Yeah. Okay, let's get them on. How am I, how am I sir? How am I supposed to move and look at my paperwork with the boxes right here? Okay, well, let me take off the, the wrist so, restraints like and then you can put them. You want them on the other side? Where you want them. This is just ridiculous. I almost skipped over this part, too. I. Shackling and putting the shackles on them right now. I'm glad somebody like turned the audio on um, <laughs> in the other courtroom, like already during the break. I mean. Oh, that might have been it. Okay. I guess they...
cut it off at that point.